the Reverend Jade Ableitner, Minister of Eagleson Parish Church, welcome. In former years, the parish church was the centre of the community. How do you see that position today? We are continuing that legacy, absolutely. I, um, I've been off on maternity leave uh, for a year, having my daughter, and actually being off and in this community, um, I have just got to know so many people through my children, toddlers groups and uh, school, etc. And the, the church is a pillar of that. Of course, uh, a lot of churches like ours have got a lot of history of people, you know, their children were baptised, there's been weddings and funerals and, you know, the, the church holds that history. But here, it's the church is the people, as the song goes. It's not a building, it's the people. And we are, as a church family, reaching out, not just to people in this congregation, but to the community. And it's uh, very much the heart of it. We are responding to the needs in the village. We are opening our church doors wide. And we are really engaging with the youth because ultimately they will fill the pews when we no longer are able to. What do you see as the strongest features of Eagleson Parish Church? And what can it offer to the village? The strongest feature is the people, is, is the church family. Uh, before, more often than not, before I've even responded to a pastoral need, someone from this congregation has beat me to it. Um, whether it's on a phone call, whether it's to the door, whether it's baking or making meals or... I mean, I've, I was visiting a lady in grief uh, who was sadly widowed and one of the members of this church family had ridden her bike to her house and was playing piano with her just to cheer her up. I mean, um, it's the people. The people really are responding. And for me, anyone that comes into this church uh, is welcomed, not just as someone to add numbers to our, our, our list of uh, folk that are in our pews, but because we want them to feel loved and embraced by a church family. And that's what we are. We are a family. Um, another thing I think is a fantastic strength of ours is our outreach to children. Eaglesome is full of families with, uh, and as we, Jackton is uh, um, growing as well with um, a lot of housing developments. We really hope to, to lead people, more people and families to the church. We've got uh, Macy Church that we do once a month, which is for those uh, as a good introduction to the church, but also a way of arts and crafts with the gospel message. There's free meals for families. Um, we have EPIC, which is our youth club on a Sunday night. We have 25 youngsters from primary six that attend there, where we give them a safe space to just be friends and have fun. Um, and then we have, uh, like yesterday, we just did a, a movie day for the school strikes where we had children here having hot chocolates, their parents working uh, online using our Wi-Fi. Credit to the congregation, we have a full-time youth worker, uh, Murdo, who is paid purely by the congregation, which in itself shows you uh, the focus of this congregation is in the children. And in the church, we are well known now for our children's corner, which is right next to where I stand and preach and we call it the noisy corner because we want children to be noisy. We want them to be seen and heard. And so this allows parents not to feel like they've got an hour and they have to keep their children quiet. Gone are those days. We want children to be embraced and loved and heard in our church. Generally, church congregations are declining. Mergers and closures are commonplace. Do you see Eagleson Parish Church continuing in the village? That's God's plan. That's very much for, I, I serve in Christ Church and um, I have absolutely uh, no qualm about that this is in the right hands. God's, this is God's plan about where we are and how we, you know, as I was saying, uh, church is not a building, it's the people. However, I will say that as the only church of Scotland in the village, uh, we are reaching out uh, with the gospel me message. We are being relevant. Um, and as the Church of Scotland looks at the mission plan, we have been in talks with neighbouring churches in Newton Mearns. And actually, God is moving in ways where 
perhaps we wouldn't have gone before if we were left to our own devices. We are thinking about uh, the fantastic things that neighbouring congregations are doing and being able to help one another with resources. Uh, so I think it's an exciting time. I think we hear a lot about negative, negative news about churches closing and, um, as you see, perhaps not as many people attending, but I see in Eagleson Parish Church an exciting time. I see uh, a faithful 150 people attend every Sunday. I see 40 children who don't come to church come to Macy Church. Um, I see 250 children come through the Carswell Centre doors every week from different organisations. So I think that it's an exciting time. I believe you have excellent relations with St Bridget's Roman Catholic Church. Could you tell me more about that? Yes, this is something that has been a, a legacy um, for Eagleson Parish Church and St Bridget's. Uh, we have more in common than not. We worship the same gods. We are serving the people of this village and we're t trying to work together to uh, respond to the needs uh, of the people here. And so in just a couple of weeks time, we will do the remembering service uh, together. We have a little service outside that we jointly do. Um, I've just proofread our Eaglesom Parish Church um, Christmas card where we actually uh, Put all the dates of the services during Advent and Christmas that St Bridget's have as well as a way of uh, working together and we are both sharing the gospel news that Jesus Christ is for all and um, it's exciting to think how we can grow doing that together. Today much is written about improving people's mental health. Do you think that belief in a Christian faith is a way of coping with life's problems? And how can people be encouraged to join that faith? Mental health, I'm so glad that um, we know far more about it nowadays and we're able to seek medical help, help as well for that. And so that's not something that can be belittled. I will say that the Christian faith um, does not mean that we do not go through life's ups and downs and tragedies and tough times. Um, I myself recently, my daughter had to have an emergency life-saving operation at three months old and at that point uh, my faith was my anchor and uh, I don't know how I would have got through it without that having that stillness and that peace when it made absolutely no sense in that situation as a mother. Um, the Bible tells us to give all our burdens to, to Christ, to leave them at his feet and for him to to help us and to carry us through it. And so I think a lot of people think as Christ followers, we're just always happy, nothing ever happens or gets to us, and it does. But the hope and the joy is that we know that Christ is with us and we know that we have each other as a church family. And that's, I would encourage people to come to listen um, and to uh, be encouraged by what God is doing and has been doing in this community. What are the highlights of being the minister of Eagleson's parish church? Oh, it's all been good. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. Um, highlights, you know, I, I think actually one, one time that really has stood out to me was when I was preaching as sole nominee here. So I've been through training for about six years. I've been through a nominating committee talking to me and interviewing me. And then I had to get a vote in the church to see if they wanted me to be their minister. And I always remember uh, a beadle, uh, one of our uh, members here, taking me aside in the vestry and saying, we want you to do well. We want you to be our minister. And really, that has been the essence of my ministry here as I've felt loved and supported by this congregation. Um, there's just so many things. I think seeing the children in the church when I first came here, there was no children attending. And now, you know, we have about 15 come along, which to me is just superb to see. Um, I think uh, recently I took a harvest assembly in Eagleson Primary School and dressed up as a giant bee. And now the children call me the Queen Bee. So that's <laughs> a highlight when I do the school run now with my children and say, uh, oh yeah, you're the bee, that's right. Um, I think being able to connect with the youth is just such a highlight to me because I know 
that uh, we're depending on them to really come in and do the amazing things that oh, our, our church family are doing. You know, there's so many people active in the ch this church and do so much, and it's reassuring for them to know that here comes the next generation. I believe he joined the ministry from the world of business. What prompted that change? Yeah, I, I came laterally from the business world, but I was uh, trained as a display designer. Um, so I was a designer by trade and I worked overseas in New Zealand and I came back uh, to Scotland and was a visual merchandising manager for Habitat. Um, that is no more, but it was on Bothwell Street in Glasgow. And when I uh, got the call into ministry, I then was fortunate enough to have a position as an office manager for a medical company. Um, that specialise in early detection of cancer and going in with the notion that I was wanting to become a minister and was very much supported by my boss for that. So for me, I actually, I was a designer before I was called by God into ministry. I loved my job. Um, it was a fabulous job. I went to Paris for work. Um, I was single and just thought I was just living a, a dream life. Um, and so I had always been part of the church. My mum uh, did Sunday school teaching. My dad was an elder. Our house was very much a swinging door with people coming in and out of the community. My mum was giving our old uh, school uniforms away to other mums before that was even a thing. Uh, we would have, I'd come in and strangers would be using the telephone because she knew people were in need and we would, everything we had in the house was, would be given away at some point to someone or another. So I lived that way of life that now I look back and realise how important that was to where I am now. Um, so I always had a niggling feeling that I needed to do more in the church and I tried exploring that by volunteering in different groups and taking part in the church and it never quite uh, stopped that niggling feeling. Um, and then my calling came in a rather unfortunate circumstance that my mum died of cancer, the same cancer that I ended up in a job that were looking at early detection, which was amazing that I ended up in that same situation. Um, and uh, it was actually a minister coming in to, to talk about my mum's eulogy. And he mentioned that he was in his 30s when he came into ministry and something clicked in me. And when he left, what was a very, of course, sad occasion, I turned around to my dad and said, I think I'm going to be a minister. And he, he replied saying, that makes sense. And the rest is history. 